Okay, so I think there will be a bunch that will continue joining, but let's just start. So first of all, welcome again to everybody. I think it has been a while we haven't done a webinar here and we are honored to have Professor Hossam Haik one more time. He's an old friend. He has, is the recipient of the uh, IVS Career Excellence Award in 2020. Uh, he has been speaking for our uh, webinar, Big Topics from Top Scientists last year. And uh, this year is here for the crucial skills to give us some advice on a specific topic on how to raise money, which is absolutely vital for any research group, but he's specifically talking about R&D. Um, before introducing, uh, letting Hossam start, I want just to make a quick announcement. We are preparing a very special event on site at IVS uh, at the end of June. So stay tuned. You will probably receive very soon an email uh, getting you to book the calendar for end of June. And hopefully we can have after three years almost of uh, just uh, web things and we saw each other only through the screen, maybe we can meet in person. So without any further ado, I really want to know Hossam how to raise money. It's a crucial th skill that we struggle every day. So please give us advice here. Stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here again. Uh, the IVS has been uh, another home for me. So um, pleasure to meet you all um, uh, throughout this Zoom. Of course, uh, you know, raising funds uh, has uh, to be accompanied with a lot of skills and a lot of training and a lot of expertise. And I do wish to bring to your attention some of the tips and some of the messages um, and the conclusions that I have uh, got in the last uh, few years uh, since I started to be independent researcher or as PI in my own lab in the Technion. Uh, just uh, to mention uh, the following, I see that uh, many of the audience uh, are, um, you know, uh, not yet, uh, uh, um, you know, PIs, uh, others are PIs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have really mixed uh, audience, and therefore I will make um, a an introduction for something that might be. Uh, uh, common or uh, understood by the senior audience uh, uh, between you. So please uh, um, forgive me if I, uh, uh, you know, introduce something that is common for you and you know it. Um, first of all, I would like to, um, you know, introduce what is a scientific proposal and what is the main purpose for the scientific proposal. So we will be in the same line. Uh, the main purpose of the scientific research proposal is to convince your audience that if you, your uh, project is worthwhile and that you have the expertise to complete it. The proposal practically has to show your uh, researchers and also the reviewers and the panel uh, where you are examined two things. First of all, that you have an important and fully considered plan to advance a valuable cause. And the other thing is that you are responsible and capable of realizing and implementing that plan. These are two complementary parts that has to come together. And the elements uh, for an effective research proposal mirror those uh, of the research process itself, which uh, in the continuation of my presentation, I will outline all of those. Um, essentially, the research proposal should include enough information for the reviewer or the panel or the reader or the evaluator that, uh, again, that your study is worth pursuing. And this is quite a tricky. There is sometimes a confusion around the research proposal versus a grant application. And I would like to have this opportunity to clarify what is the difference between both. A research proposal is a statement of intent that relates to the answer uh, for a research question. At the time, a grant application is a specific request for funding to complete the proposed research. So there is a connection between both of them, but the terminology, of course, we have to distinguish between both um, um, in practicality. 
Of course, uh, these elements, again, as I have shown, they, they are quite uh, uh, relevant and interconnected between uh, each the other. If we take a look on which types of uh, proposals or grant applications we might apply for, we have uh, three main uh, categories. One category is to fund equipment and infrastructure of lab, and this is most relevant to the uh, uh, young PIs who has been accepted to an academic institution where they have this opportunity to uh, provide or to ask for a support uh, for uh, um, having some more equipment into their labs. Uh, a good example is the ISF, Israel Science Foundation uh, infrastructure proposals. And sometimes you can go to uh, PIs that has a mid career. The other issue is to fund researchers to apply their own ideas and their own research plans, something that uh, anybody, uh, everybody knows. And there is also a great opportunity which uh, have, um, uh, um, you know, the utility to enable researcher to work in collaboration or to find a way to collaborate with other researchers or with other companies uh, or organizations. And this is called consortium. And uh, this is a model that is very, very common uh, in the European Commission, something that I will mention uh, in the continuation of my talk. Uh, and of course, in Israel, we have some consortiums, which I will talk about as well. Um, practically, when uh, uh, you come to a research proposal, uh, there are several types of ideas which you can uh, apply for. One of these idea is what is called breakthroughout ideas, uh, what we call uh, breakthroughout innovation, namely something that is high risk at, from one side, high risk to fail. But on the other hand, it's high gain that in case if uh, 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 it's included in the 5% to be successful, that will really make excellent uh, news for the scientific community and will produce a new mainstream uh, in the science regime. Just an example, again, it's not an advertisement. Uh, when we have the first iPhone in the world, this is a breakthrough of innovation. But when you go from one uh, iPhone uh, version to other iPhone version, uh, iPhone number uh, 12 to iPhone number 13, this is called gradual innovation, okay? And therefore, uh, this is good uh, as well. Costa, can, can we ask questions? Um, yes, please. Yeah, I want to just ask you one question on this one. When you have something completely new, high risk, it mm -hmm. means you are at the very early stage and exactly. you are divulging that to reviewers who may be your competitors and may be inspired by the idea and maybe scoop you up. So how do you manage how much you disclose versus how much you don't disclose based on this? You want money for something that you haven't really advanced so much because it's completely new, high risk. Th that's true. Uh, practically, uh, when you have high risk uh, idea, high gain, there are uh, special schemes uh, that are relevant to these uh, specific uh, ideas, uh, such as the uh, Open Pathfinder program in the EU. In Israel, we have throughout the uh, Ministry of Science and uh, Technology. Uh, but sometimes you have to disclose. You have no other choice. Um, you know, you have to take a risk. At the end, you know, when I was a young researcher, I was too much worried about whether to expose my idea or not. Today, as a senior scientist, I think it doesn't matter. At the end, the real examination is uh, how you implement the idea. Okay, so sometimes you have to take the risk. Um, and also, uh, you have to notice that reviewers, uh, when they usually sign the agreement to review a proposal, they have to declare that they have no conflict of interest. So I, I will uh, proceed uh, uh, for the other types of research, and this is the most common types of research we have uh, to provide better solution to something that exists. It's called the gradual innovation or gradual uh, progress. Uh, this is most of the applications where we are. Uh, and of course, there is another uh, category which is called the multidisciplinary ideas where you combine different disciplines together to get one uh, given uh, product. 
uh, before you start uh, um, uh, writing your own proposal, uh, first of all, you have to think uh, uh, which call you have to uh, target. There are two ways how to do it. Either you have an idea and then you look for a call uh, specifically and then you apply, or sometimes uh, you have a, 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 a spectrum of calls for many research, and then you have to modify your idea and your proposal so it can fit the call. Yeah. So uh, these two approaches work quite well. Every uh, approach has its pros and cons. If you could please put yourself on mute. Okay. Um, when we come uh, to the types of calls and the types of organizations that uh, can support um, uh, real uh, proposals uh, on the whole spectrum, which I have mentioned earlier, we might put them in three categories that have some overlap between them. The first category is uh, 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 relates to organizations that uh, targeted uh, basically for academic users or academic researchers. And this is practically more the public funding. This could include, for example, the ISF, Israel Science Foundation, the BSF, the Binational Israel uh, uh, United States uh, Foundation, the GIF, the German Israel Foundation, for example, the NIH, the European Commission, et cetera, et cetera. And in this case, uh, in this case, again, as I have mentioned earlier, you can ask either to support your own research, uh, infrastructure, or multidisciplinary research. Uh, this part of the uh, 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 funding scheme is very, very important for the young scientists uh, between us for two reasons. The first reason is to enable you to, uh, um, of course, to implement your own research. But the other reason is that this might affect your own promotion. And I mean the following. Usually in promotion, at least... Um, in most of the academic institutes, which I know in Israel or abroad, they always seek to find a way that the scientific community have a stamp or signature on the quality of your work. And this comes throughout the evaluation process uh, throughout these organizations. And therefore getting a fund from a competitive uh, 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 foundation, such as the ISF or the ERC or the GIF, this regarding of the amount of money or the funding that you might get, this is quite a critical as, and it, this is one of the evaluation or the criterions in many times on the promotion of your own file for the next stage on your uh, professorship. So please uh, uh, pay attention for this point. Of course, what I mean by competitive, competitive means that, you know, many, many researchers will uh, 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 provide their own proposals and uh, you will be selected within those top 30% uh, percent or 40%. Percent. The non-competitive, it's like, you know, to get uh, a grant uh, by collaboration with a big company, but there was no competition uh, uh, with the, any other uh, entity. Uh, that doesn't mean that the, the non-competitive grants are not good. They are good, but for the evaluation process for your academic career, this is quite critical to have, uh, you know, these uh, uh, grants from this scale. The other uh, category, which you might always take a look on uh, uh, in order to proceed uh, and to get some more funding is about the commercial entities. That could be uh, done throughout collaboration with big companies. Um, uh, which has also the advantage not only in terms of funding, but rather because of the uh, fact that this will allow you to participate or uh, to partnership with a user that have eyes on the market. You know, a big company knows exactly what goes in the market, what are the exact needs. And therefore, if you collaborate with those companies, mostly big companies, international companies, they might direct your research accordingly, so you will get uh, from the basic science directly to the applied science, directly to the uh, entrepreneurship uh, uh, aspects. This is quite critical in this case. Um, of course, sometimes uh, there are other models uh, for the uh, uh, um, you know, collaboration with the commercial agents, uh, but uh, this has to be considered also quite carefully. 
please note that once you go into collaboration with uh, commercial entities, usually you will be evaluated and there will be a request to defend your IPs and to find a way to manage the IP sharing between the commercial entity and between your own contribution. This is sometimes a bottleneck, especially when we talk about the, you know, uh, in the uh, industry academy uh, uh, interface here in Israel, but it's sometimes really very worthy. Other type of uh, getting funding is throughout SME, small medium enterprise, which could be a spin off uh, um, of your own technology or a startup of your own uh, technology where the company uh, have to make uh, some research to investigate a given aspect of the technology. And therefore they will provide you throughout the agency uh, of the uh, universities, relevant agencies of the universities, a funding support to do that research for the benefit of uh, 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 the company. This is quite acceptable, but it has to go throughout two entities in the university, which is the legal entity, and of course the administration entity, which we call it uh, uh, a research authority. Um, you know, this name differ from one university to other university. Uh, the other part uh, uh, in this case, uh, which you see in the gray color, is uh, uh, relevant to philanthropy. Practically, when we say philanthropy, there is a conflict uh, between the word of philanthropy and uh, uh, research sometimes. Philanthropy, at least in Israel, is given usually to build buildings, to fund infrastructure, uh, uh, to uh, support the students, et cetera, et cetera. It's less common to support a given research uh, uh, throughout philanthropy because uh, the academic institute want to make sure that you have done excellent job in recruiting uh, you know, uh, funding and uh, support to do your own research based on a standardization uh, or standardized uh, uh, criterions that are acceptable by the uh, um, higher education uh, universities. But nevertheless, I know that there are some universities these days that are open for donations to support some research and those mainly uh, for the applied sciences. Uh, this depends uh, and varies between one university to the other university. So please ask in your own university whether you have this opportunity or not. Of course, sometimes we will have the public private consortium which is more common on the European Commission where uh, um, you know, academic institutes will collaborate with industrial entities together with foundations and nonprofit organizations to make a consortium around one idea uh, which can benefit uh, all of them. Usually for these consortiums, uh, if I will have time, I will uh, elaborate on it more. Usually uh, for these consortiums, there is one idea that you have to support it from different angles, um, either scientifically or technologically. Namely, if you want, for example, to uh, make a research in the field of a new treatment of cancer, then you can uh, bring biologists to um, a biologist uh, partner to uh, um, you know examine the. Uh, a cellular mechanism inside that uh, cell of cancer. You can bring mechanical engineer to, uh, say, to uh, find a way how we will have uh, a mechanical stability evaluation for the uh, cancer. And you can bring uh, also a spin-off company or big industrial uh, partner to bring the translational uh, uh, phase into this uh, uh, project. All of that acceptable, this is quite common and this is very uh, uh, good because in this case, you will not give only one uh, specific solution for the idea which you are proposing, but rather you will give multidisciplinary solutions uh, simultaneously that can benefit uh, the project in much wider impact uh, 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 for your own idea. If I would like to summarize the, uh, you know, all of uh, the schemes uh, of funding in very nice way, I uh, could do it throughout the European Commission. 
And this uh, schematics, which I have uh, taken from the European Commission, really summarize all of the pillars and all the schemes that currently exist for all uh, the levels of readiness uh, of the technology, of the readiness of the science itself. In the European Commission, for example, you have three pillars to support research. The first pillar is called the open science, and uh, it uh, supports only science, not technology. Unless otherwise, the technology is a direct result of uh, a really breakthrough out science. So in this pillar, you know, uh, uh, they support basic ideas. It's more basic science ideas. Uh, and the, one of the most common examples uh, in this pillar uh, is the ERC grants, uh, the starting consolidator and the uh, advanced stage. And here, as you know, if you try to talk about applied science or applied engineering, in this case, that you will have less chances to get accepted or to win this proposal these days. In the past, the, the criteria were different, but these days uh, you have to focus on basic science. And of course, there are some uh, 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 other schemes such as the Marie Curie, which can uh, um, support mobility of researchers from one institute to other institute to do some more basic science. The pillar number three, and I will jump on pillar number two, um, and we'll come back very soon uh, to that. Pillar number three is basically similar to pillar number one, but instead of the open science, instead of the science, it will be technology. Namely, it seeks the most innovative and the breakthrough out technologies in the European Commission to support. And one of the most prominent examples of this scheme, it's called Open Pathfinder. Just to tell you what is uh, Open Pathfinder in terms of statistics, last year, uh, 900 applications has been uh, provided to this scheme and only 50 were approved. And these were the most and uh, the craziest ideas uh, ever you hear about, something that is not known usually in our, uh, you know, in our current technologies. Um, for example, to do X-ray by optics, regular optics without the need for rentgen. Okay, that was one of the proposals. Uh, I don't know how they do it, but uh, just to tell you uh, uh, an example, what they are looking for. And in this case, you can apply as individual researcher or as a group of researchers and uh, or as a group of researchers together with industry. So you have a, a very nice, uh, um, very nice combination. Of course, if you ask the same question with a pillar number one allows you to apply things also as individual researcher or as a group of researcher, then it uh, allows you to do both together. Uh, in ERC, you have the ERC as individual researcher, which called consolidator, starting and advanced. But on the other hand, there is a scheme which called ARC Synergy, which combines several researchers disregarding of their academic career together in order to get uh, some idea, uh, you know, uh, forward. The other scheme, which is called pillar number two in this case, it's called the consortium. It's a combination of several partners that aims to develop one idea for the benefit of the humanity or the benefit of the technology. And usually this is more uh, about translational science or applied science. But in this case, you can, uh, again, um, combine uh, several partners with several expertise. Just to give you an example, a consortium might be, uh, uh, might consist of uh, uh, three universities, each of which has different expertise. Uh, one big industry, two uh, SMEs, one uh, 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 non-profit uh, foundation, et cetera, et cetera. Either in the field of health or security or digital and industry, a climate energy or food and natural resources. Um, in this pillar, you have two opportunities, how you participate. Either you have your own idea that you wish to find partners to support this idea and to apply it, uh, to apply for, or you can participate as a partner in a big consortium that is coordinated and led by other partner. There are, are a lot of opportunities. Today, the success rate is around uh, 15%. Uh, 
very challenging, but the advantage of these all schemes in the EU that the amount of funding that you might get are really much higher than what we can get usually in the state of Israel. Uh, in, sometimes you can get uh, millions of, uh, over millions uh, of euros uh, by one of these schemes, something that of course can promote your research uh, accordingly. Of course, beyond all of that, if you are seeking only networking around education or only networking to discuss your science without too much infrastructure, there is pillar number four, uh, such as the Erasmus uh, uh, um, you know, scheme uh, of calls, which you can utilize as well. So the opportunities are, are really high. Uh, take a look on, uh, on all of those. Uh, um, uh, and I uh, assume that uh, your um, uh, research authority has all the information for that. Um, now, after you have identified the call and you have uh, a lot of uh, you know, opportunities, you have to write your own proposal. And I wish to give you some uh, you know, tips or some uh, uh, of my understandings in the last few years. And uh, first of all, the most trivial part, whether you are eligible to participate in that scheme uh, or call, uh, this is something that depends on the age and uh, sometimes on the theme. For example, if you are uh, uh, you know, a senior researcher with above 10 years uh, of seniority, you cannot participate in ERC starting. So this is, this is a trivial thing. And the, other, and the other issue that if he, the project needs partners, you have to identify your partners. And my recommendation is as follows. There are two ways how to seek your partners. Sometimes uh, many people uh, assemble together and they start to look for something or an idea or concept to apply for together. Some, uh, an idea that satisfy or combine all the expertise of all of these researchers together. This is one approach. The other approach, which I think it's much better, and this is at least what I prefer, is to have your own idea and then to look for the partners that might support your ideas from different angles. That will look also in the eyes of the reviewers much more natural, not artificial combination as the first option, which I have mentioned earlier. So the way how to look for partners is uh, uh, very important and much more important these days that many of the organization look for multidisciplinary. The more you are multidisciplinary, the more chances that you will increase the impact of your work and the implementation of your research. And therefore today, of course, um, this is not universal. Most of uh, those foundation, foundations that I know prefer the multidisciplinary. Uh, some uh, tips before you start uh, writing your uh, 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 proposals, uh, general ones. First of all, uh, reviewers for your own proposal not necessarily knows exactly your own research. They might know the, they might be from the same field, but not necessarily know exactly your research. Out of five uh, experts who evaluate your research, maybe only one or two, that know exactly the details uh, and they are experts in the details of your proposal. So just be aware for that. Uh, very important that your proposal has to be accessible to layman in many cases. When you have a, a, a reviewers that uh, a, many times uh, are in your field but don't understand the main uh, specifics or the main details of your research, try to make uh, 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 the presentation in easy way that everybody can understand. Of course, without uh, putting the quality of the information, uh, 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 quality of the information that you provide uh, uh, aside. Um, the other one uh, that uh, uh, I would uh, recommend uh, that uh, if you want to go to research, uh, there are several types of risk for success. There is the low risk. This is for sure that your research will work and this is a gradual innovation. There will be the moderate and there will be the high. In my own opinion, but of course, uh, this is my own opinion only. 
uh, moderate to high uh, uh, risk uh, research uh, is much more acceptable today by the organizations. Low risk uh, will not uh, really give you the push uh, in order to uh, get funding. Um, the, the structure of the proposal, of course, I will not uh, go inside. It depends on the foundation. It depends on the call, et cetera, et cetera. It includes all of these parts, which you see on the screen. So I will not go how to write the proposal and what are the different parts of the proposal, but I will jump to something uh, at least, which I think uh, is much more important. First of all, uh, there are several things uh, that we have to consider before writing the proposal. And one of these, who is your audience? Not only the reviewer, who is, is your audience? It could be the reviewers, the researchers, uh, it could be the experts uh, that will receive your uh, proposal to evaluate, et cetera, et cetera. Please note that each stakeholder will have their own goals and preferences. For example, the criterions that are set by IS, ISF are different than those uh, set by the Open Pathfinder. And therefore, if you have one idea that you want to present to different agencies, every time you have to uh, present your proposal in different way that matches the expectations of the foundation. Copy and paste in this case will not work. Uh, you have to talk uh, the same language as the organization wish to have. And this can come throughout several uh, questions that you might ask yourself. How familiar the organization or the experts with the project of, uh, or the problem that you are raising in your proposal? What they do uh, already know and what they don't, don't know. And of course, uh, if you feel that they really don't know too much about your uh, research, uh, then you have to provide enough details and the straight uh, to the target details in the background uh, to explain for the reviewer uh, what is the state of the art in your field and what is the progress beyond the state of the art that you are aiming for. Um, something very important, but this is something that you cannot expect, but the more, uh, a, a, the more uh, you know, information you can gather before you start writing, that will be great, is what this committee or this organization want to hear. For example, if I want, uh, uh, if there is an organization that seeks for uh, Alzheimer uh, research uh, treatment, um, this is their aim. I cannot uh, give them uh, uh, too much uh, you know, offers about uh, Alzheimer uh, detection. They want treatment, then try to uh, focus on the treatment. Otherwise the diagnosis will be less in their own list of priorities. Of course, again, um, sometimes there are exceptions, but this is the norm. Um, Something else uh, that you have to ask yourself at this stage, is there any particular way to make uh, them, the reviewers, the foundation, to better understand what you are wanting to convey? And this is how you build the story. The way you build the story and the presentation is really very critical, okay? And um, uh, so the person understand very fast what you are aiming for. For example, if the proposal that you are writing is for uh, the technology department uh, head, then uh, the proposal has to be written in jargon and technical language. On the other hand, if you are submitting your proposal to a small business, for example, then you can use simple uh, words that can be understood by any person and uh, really uh, include their easy to understand language while highlighting the project positive impact for that business. Again, this is the same idea, but different ways to approach your ideas to different partners or to different stakeholders. The other issue is how you clearly and logically present your plan, something that I have already mentioned in my previous uh, uh, um, you know, uh, discussion. Usually try not to write too much background around the, that it could exhaust the reviewer. The grant proposals has to be direct and to the point. 
Therefore, you have to match the concepts and the language that your readers use and to be familiar with all of these uh, elements. The reader, uh, from my own perspective, shouldn't have uh, to work hard to understand what you are trying to communicate. Usually, uh, everybody is busy, including the reviewer. So don't allow, don't uh, give the reviewer, uh, you know, the uh, you know um, need to go to the internet to search uh, for that uh, uh, kind of terminology or to understand that logic. Try to implement it already in your background. Of course, uh, the more you use uh, uh, images or flowcharts, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that could be really helpful as well. In the background, at the, towards the end of the background, you have to define what is the problem. Um, what is the problem that your project is trying to address and uh, why you consider it as a, a problem. And this is, comes at the interface between the background, the state of the art, and the future plans. This is the interface that connects between what has been done in the field and what will be done in the field in the future. And uh, in order to do so, you uh, can have two uh, uh, ways to do it. You have to start strong and use the facts, not your, op uh, your own opinion. And I will explain myself. You have to start strong uh, because decision makers uh, usually don't have much time to look over a proposal. So you have to make sure that the pain point is described in a manner that resonates with them and their time uh, or the time that is allocated for the review process. For example, I know several uh, uh, funding schemes that the reviewer has to um, you know, review 45 pages with all of the appendixes within three hours, okay? Uh, which is really very complicated. In your background, uh, though you have your own opinion as independent researcher, try to use facts, uh, a, a statistics, a not your own opinion, uh, that will be much more convincing. Um, you know, we are, as researchers, rely uh, at least uh, in the science and uh, technology uh, disciplines. We, we always uh, rely on numbers and statistics, so try to do it this way. Uh, of course, uh, 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 when you try to present your solution uh, and come to the objectives of research, you have always to think about uh, three items. One, you have to anticipate the questions and the objections that you might get from the reviewers, because this is a way to let you know exactly how to provide the answers already inside your text. Then you have to show that uh, 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 your research or the objectives of your research bring a large impact. The larger impact that your, researcher, uh, your research uh, brings, the more convincing uh, will be for the stakeholders. Because again, stakeholders want to see that their money goes to affect as many as people, as the, uh, many as technologies or sciences or disciplines. And again, I want just to uh, um, stress again, Facts over your opinion. Provide as many research-backed uh, examples as you can. The most critical part, in my own opinion, is uh, the details of your research uh, approach. And this will include a strategy, and then it will include the work plan. Um, my own recommendation you know, sometimes there are two ways how to do it. Uh, you might uh, write all the experiments and, uh, you know, the methodology step by step, which is great. And then at the end of this uh, section, the reviewer will understand what you are trying to do. Or otherwise, my own opinion is you have to start with a brief section to say what you are uh, uh, going to do, what is the big picture you are aiming for in the methodology section. And from there, you start making uh, this uh, a, a fragmentation of your own over, uh, all strategy. So everybody will understand each point together at the time they have the whole point or the picture in their own mind. 
So my, uh, my recommendation in this case is that you have to introduce the project strategies and uh, uh, with these strategies, of course, you have to bring the big picture. And of course, you have to show which uh, 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 and who will do each part of this picture. For example, if you use subcontractor, you have to mention it in that uh, aspect. If you have uh, a collaborator that might contribute to something that you want to implement in your research, but you don't have the expertise, then you have to mention it already in that section or paragraph that uh, describes uh, the whole uh, strategy. Uh, very important also uh, afterwards, very briefly, to describe uh, the way you will uh, manage the project. Again, don't, it's, it will be two or three sentences at the, end, uh, at the beginning of the project plan, because again, the reviewer want to see that you are serious and you have thought about all of these uh, aspects. Um, of course, as part of the uh, research proposal and uh, implementation, you have to include the, the deliverables and the success criteria. Um, you have to include, for example, what is your expectations uh, in the format of a Gantt chart or BERT uh, diagram? Uh, what is the date expected to, uh, uh, to get uh, each of uh, these milestones or uh, deliverables and to connect between all of them. And of course, you have uh, a, 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 to show that your solution is a SMART. And SMART is the abbreviation of a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bond. These are the five, the five criterions. Again, SMART, it's called the SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bond. This is quite uh, the, this is quite important, and also it's quite important at this stage to include the risk analysis and contingency plan. There is no perfect researcher uh, research. Uh, many of the plans that we uh, usually have in our minds might not work, and therefore you have to think about what will not work in uh, in the course of your project, and then to list all of these, and then to show that in case there will be a failure then you will uh, 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 have alternative plan. This is quite a critical part. Uh, so please try to include it uh, as uh, much as possible in your own plan. Because we are uh, uh, coming to the end, I will have a few more minutes. Um, uh, so we will keep uh, it time for uh, answers, uh, answers and questions. Um, Budget issues, uh, budget issues, of course, you have to make as much as details that uh, is uh, possible. You have to break down your budget into categories such as supplies, tools, salaries. You have to include the, the overhead, indirect cost. Uh, uh, but this is very important not only to ask for funding, but also to show the um, organization or the foundation that you have thought about all of the elements of your research from A to Z in very serious way. Um, in the case of budget, don't, uh, be concrete uh, and to try not to, get, to, uh, to make a guess. Uh, because again, one of the evaluation criterions in many foundations is whether the funding is uh, a funding allocation is relevant to the research plan. Sometimes uh, many people will uh, get reduction of points because of the uh, mismatching between these two parts. Um, of course, uh, once you end your uh, proposal, you have uh, to uh, uh, do it in, uh, uh, you know, also to look uh, very, very nice. I will not have time to talk about the consortium, uh, but again, if you have an idea, big idea that needs many partners, then the first thing that you have to do is to bring your own idea and then to look for the partners that supports the idea from different angles. For example, if you want to develop again uh, a smartphone, then you have a new smartphone. Uh, uh, then you have uh, uh, to bring people that work in the microelectronics, other people that work in the optics. Uh, the, you have to bring a, a partners that uh, really has an expertise in the communication with the uh, 5G or 7G, something much uh, newer or breakthrough out. You have to bring people 
also uh, to um, support also the app and the artificial intelligence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But please note, for these consortium grants, it's very, very, very critical these days to pay attention for human sciences and social sciences and their integration therein. For a long period, a social sciences and human sciences were one discipline and science and technology were a different uh, scheme. Today in consortium, they have to go together because technology today brings many ethical issues, many privacy issues and many uh, 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 safety issues that the social scientists and the human uh, experts, uh, human science experts can bring us answers. Of course, they are uh, 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 they have expertise specifically uh, with the technology matters. So please take a look on uh, uh, these aspects. And of course, there are many uh, opportunities in the European Commission. I uh, will not tell you this is an easy to win uh, coordination of project. This is really very challenging. But uh, of course, uh, if you do it uh, correctly, uh, uh, the chances uh, to succeed will be quite high. I will share my presentation throughout the IBS uh, uh, so you will get uh, the extra slides. Um, in the meanwhile, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, will be ready and happy to answer questions if there are any. Thanks, Horsam. Very, very useful. And now the floor is open for questions. Well, if there, there's no question, I have a question to start with you because I just finished writing a bilateral and uh, it's interesting how different grants have so different requirements on what they want, what they don't want, and the length of the application that they want. So I saw your points that were kind of, I would say, yes, 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 on all the points you made. But when you have a proposal where they ask you to write your descri detailed description in 4,500 4, characters, then, you know, you have to make very drastic choices on what you say in there. It's very, very small, small amounts. Uh, or, or things that idiosyncrasies, re, European projects you mentioned a lot. I mean, one thing that is, I, I found is absolutely crazy on, on, on European projects is uh, their focus on dissemination. You know, if you don't have dissemination, it's it's a it's a no no. You have to have, and and most other grants don't care about that. That's true. The European Commission, uh, uh, you know. You know, focus on this dissemination, but uh, it depends actually. Today in the horizon, Europe things are different. For example, if you take a look on the ERC mm -hmm. or the Open Pathfinder for the technology part, the the, the focus sixty percent of the overall uh, evaluation is on the excellence part, not the impact, not the dissemination, not the implementation. Sixty percent. Right. right, right, right. If you take a look on the consortiums. The dissemination will take much higher uh, part indeed. Yeah. So questions? Don't be shy. It's a one unique opportunity to have, of course, I'm answering you on all these uh, grant questions. In fact, if, yes, if there's no other, I, I have a second question for you. The mm -hmm. European grants, the, overhead to write those grants is tremendous. How do you think, because I've seen different models in different universities. Abroad, I've seen they have an specific offices where they have project management, project management, they help you to write the grant. So of course the PI has to come up with the idea and so on, but there's so much more to do on a European grant that takes so much time um, that somehow I have the feeling you need a very, uh, intense structure, someone really in charge of writing that grant, or at least two or three people that help on this thing. What's your experience on that? You know, I have uh, uh, coordinated five consortiums, a uh, big consortium with over 50 partners in Europe already. Oh. And okay. I can tell you that, uh, you know, from, you know, firsthand experience, you know, Project managers or proposal managers can help you to uh, uh, efficiently uh, in the financial part, in the administration part, there is no replacement for the PI in the scientific part. 
and that, the that, no, that's there, sure. there is no replacement if the no pi will not be involved personally to lead this part i think the result will be failure no no that's there's no question i'm, I'm talking more about all the other administrative and, and format and things i mean there is no, no, no. The, the idea, actually, no question, PI should be on it, on to the, all the details of technical side is, I'm talking. No, actually, this is not uh, the, the way. There are today many companies uh, that offer to do from A to Z. You just bring the idea and they will write everything, including the science. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. there are uh, several companies, uh, uh, consultants. Again, oh. my recommendation, the PI is the best to lead the scientific part. Okay, the administration and the financial, you can have, uh, you know, good uh, support by either local authority in your university or by uh, consultants, which is great. Okay, I see here a question from Amita Grawal. What is the most common mistakes general researchers commit in their applications? I think the, the uh, focus of their ideas. The, the, many times, you know, the researcher has uh, a, a clear idea what they want to do, but it cannot, it's not described in a proper way. So the reviewer will see many, many different items uh, and combination between the many different items rather than one big and in-depth idea. Okay, so the focus is the most important part. And the focus starts, as I have said, from the background that you write and in the introduction, tell the objectives. Okay, of course, in the implementation, you can use several arms to implement uh, your idea. This is uh, the, one of the biggest uh, 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 mistakes which I uh, uh, see. And sometimes the matching between the idea and the call. Uh, many people sometimes, uh, you know, uh, provide excellent idea for the wrong foundation. Sorry, there is no wrong foundation, but for for the in suitable in not suitable you know uh, call. Okay, all the foundations are good. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So the, this matching between your idea and the call expectation, this is one uh, of the most critical parts as well. Another yeah. question from also from Amit. Sorry, just to fit. He said to what extent ideas can overlap when applying for multiple grants is a very relevant question because sometimes grant you grants give you very small money and then you you need more for doing the big idea that you you want so how how can you overlap the yeah. the technical part usually you can provide your you can submit your proposals to several several funding agencies unless otherwise it's uh, stated by that agency that you cannot do it for example in the isf they ask uh, quite clearly, whether we have submitted that proposal to other one to other foundation, and if so, you cannot apply your own idea. But many other foundations don't have this request, so you are free to do whatever you want. But when they have, you can do focus slightly, change the focus, and work on the same exactly. technology. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, Let me ask you. I would like. Okay. I have a question regarding yeah. the, uh, what uh, was written there. So. I understand not the same idea can be applied for multiple grants, but then you, you can change the focus, like slightly changing the focus would be enough or how much? It's, it's, it's you know, it's not a slightly changing the focus, it's uh, to change the way you deliver the idea. Okay, for example, if you talk with, uh, on, ca not cancer because we are IVS, uh, on um, microelectronics uh, chip, Okay, uh, for, a, for a foundation that supports uh, chips uh, uh, for biological uh, uh, detection, okay, then you have to write uh, the introduction to include much more biolog biology and also the objectives has to uh, uh, include much more biology. If you want to take the uh, same chip for the physics domain to search uh, the utility of the whole mobility inside the, that chip, okay? Then you have to write the introduction in a different way. The introduction cannot be the same in this case, neither the objectives also, but the implementation way might be overlapping um, very nicely, sometimes in 70 or 80%. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to ask a question. Um, sometimes, Especially in the narrow field, you submit your proposal 
and you're afraid that uh, some of your colleagues, uh, if they compete with you, they might be negative towards because you're, you're the, the, the competitor, or you are a bit afraid of uh, someone stealing your ideas. Uh, so maybe it is better for you before you submit a grant, like to publish a small paper or to write a, uh, or, or to write a patent, just like to, uh, to say to, uh, to anchor in the scientific community that you are ready. And like you said before, it is also, it shows that you do have the feasibilities to uh, the capabilities of, of, uh, of, uh, of performing uh, the suggested uh, research. No, but it, it, each research proposal requests uh, some preliminary results. So I, I think once you have the preliminary results, this is enough. I, I am not. I am not. Uh, you know, in favor of publishing small articles uh, just to publish uh, because of the competition. Uh, this is my own uh, opinion, but of course, other opinions are correct as well. You know, I, I work in very competitive field as well, but I feel much uh, uh, better to provide very strong article because once I uh, make the publication of preliminary results, that will block me in the future uh, uh, for many other journals, the high quality journals. So I would uh, provide the preliminary results, but again, uh, once the reviewer will sign the contract to review, uh, he or she has to um, uh, sign the lack of uh, conflict of interest. This is uh, one. And of course, you don't need to expose all of your results for in the preliminary results or ideas. Um, um, I hope this answers uh, your question. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, amazing. Okay, uh, last question is I see when when you are applying from let me just see when you are applying for a team with a to, with the grant as a team does it matter that your partner is next door in your institute or placed in another country no this, this could be both uh, it depends on the institution uh, many times you can uh, actually I have never seen uh, a grant application or a call that um, restricts collaboration within the same university. Um, I, I haven't seen that. In the European Commission, for example, many times they request uh, at least three partners from three different countries, which is, which is good. But that doesn't exclude the fact that you might collaborate or bring another partners within your institution. This, this should be fine. Okay. Just one, one last question. You said that there is uh, no necessity to include prelim preliminary results, but doesn't it make it way more stronger for the reviewers? As a reviewer, when you see preliminary data... I, don't know. I have seen that you have to provide the preliminary results. I have said that we have. Are you okay? Okay. So I want to thank Hossam again. You, you gave us, at least me, a lot of food for thought. You know, I think I have been through through the grinder grinder with this uh, with this process, and as I think many of you have also. But there is a lot to learn, and uh, I appreciate that you share your experience, that you have led consortiums, that you have given us your uh, your words of wisdom on this. I am looking forward to the presentation to be on the IBS website to look at the at the details, and then. Uh, Again, Hossam, thank you again for this. And uh, Hevre, we plan an event end of June. Hope to see you all. And uh, of course, we will continue this series between the big topics and the crucial skills. And uh, Hossam, thank you again for being part of all of it. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.